What's going on, boys and girls? Welcome back to Combat Sports Central. Today, we're doing our Friday bet video for UFC Vegas 90. We're back at the Apex after traveling to Atlantic City, and we are one weekend away from the biggest, one of the biggest events in the UFC's history, their three-decade event, UFC 300, which I am uber excited for. You have so many good fights. The opening fucking fight is two former champions, Figueroa versus Cody Garbrandt, two of the most exciting fights under 145 pounds clashing in the first fight and the card does not get worse through every fight i'm hoping to have six to eight best bet videos for that event ready and out by tuesday i already have two done in the editing phase i have one script recorded five more i'm gonna be grinding ufc 300 on sunday but for today's video we're taking a look at ufc vegas 90 my bets for the card i posted them all to twitter this morning and i also want to recap the last two events i'll do it at the end of the video because some of you might not be interested in it because i didn't make friday videos it was exclusively on my twitter all my picks for those last two events so we'll go over it and honestly i'm looking to do a little bit of bankroll management myself and doing that at the end of the video will help but without further ado let's get into my picks for ufc vegas 90 so we begin with Ignacio Bahamondes versus Christos Yagos. I made a best bet video for this. I think that Bahamondes is rightly the wide favorite. I think that his striking is only going to look better and better as the rounds go. And Yagos' best shot is his hooks or his ability to take down and control, which I don't know if he has in his bag, in my opinion. So I'm on the Ignacio Bahamondes side, but I would never be on it at minus 300. I wanted to get a little risky, so I took a look at his submission line. He has shown jujitsu skills, in my opinion, off his back in the Klein fight, even though he was controlled and held down. He was throwing up submissions and then the guillotine against Rong Zhu. I really do think that he has the ability that behind his striking, he might be able to land a submission in this fight. So I took him by sub, plus 425. I got on North Star. It's between 300 and 425. That is the best number I could find. I got a third of a unit on that. And then I also went to FanDuel for sub two and sub three, round two, round three. That's plus 1,400 and plus 1,900 respectively. And I actually favor this submission to come in the second or third round. So I really, really like those plays at 14 to 1 and 19 to 1. Then main event time, Chris Curtis, Brandon Allen. You usually see this trap in rematches where the loser of the original fight goes on a momentum run and then gets the favorite number in their second fight. So Curtis is actually at plus 185 here after defeating Brandon Allen in their last fight. Curtis, in my opinion, if the fight gets to a decision, probably will lose. And as the fight goes, Allen may get closer and closer to landing a submission. But Curtis, a well-known anti-wrestler. He's great with his defensive wrestling and keeping fights on the feet. And then he just needs to find a moment. In the Buckley fight, he was getting outstruck, but he found his moment. He has power, one-punch knockout power. We saw it when he fought Allen the first time. He wins via TKO. I think it is a likely spot for him in this fight. I might even look at Chris Curtis' TKO line and cash out of this one. But for now, I have a half a unit or just over half a unit on Chris Curtis' money line at plus 185. The TKO prop is probably another one I'm going to enjoy. But again, if Curtis gets on the gas pedal and wins this fight by decision, which again, I have less likely than a TKO win for Curtis, I think that we're lucky to get this at plus 185 for a guy that already defeated this opponent. Then in the Walter Walker fight versus Lucas Brzezeski, I missed this line at the prime number. I wanted it at minus 130. I went to bed with it at minus 130 on like Wednesday. And then I woke up to it at minus 160 to minus 180 on most books. I got in at minus 154. I still think there's value there. I'm going to go in with 1.3 units on that. Walker is not a finisher, in my opinion. And honestly, his undefeated record is not the greatest. He is grapple heavy, but not finish heavy. He doesn't go for finishes in his recent fights. They prolong, and he doesn't get submissions or TKOs via ground and pound. I think Lucas has enough to survive seven and a half minutes especially if we can keep this fight on the feet for just a little bit Walter does have a chin so i don't expect him to get tko'd early give me over one and a half rounds i think it's easy there i also took matsumoto minus three and a half points so this is the point spread if it goes to decision he needs 130 27 29 28 29 28 or he can get a finish at any time now i was gonna take him by decision at plus 125 but then i found because on DraftKings, his minus three and a half points is plus 135. So by decision, I kind of like that. You get the split decision win. You get the 29, 28 on all three, which I would have been fine with. I go on bet online. They have minus three and a half points on Matsumoto at plus 175. That was too much to look away from. I put 0 0.66 units on that. 
I am confident I am going to be able to cash that in my opinion. It's a little more risky than the by decision, but I do think that Matsumoto has the ability to maybe finish this fight with his knees and his Muay Thai background, or if he goes to a judge's scorecard, get 130-27, which would be great. And this is near two to one your money. And then finally, also in the main event, Chris Curtis's significant strike line for the first round. It's sitting at 24 and a half. Heavily influenced by their first fight. Chris Curtis landed 31 significant strikes in the first round of that Brandon Allen fight. In every single other UFC performance he has had, he has gone under 24 and a half. He averages 5.9 significant strikes per five minutes. So that would say, okay, so he's probably going to get 25. He averages 3.6 in the first round. His significant strike first round numbers read as follows in his UFC debut to his most recent fight, 17, 21, 31, which was the Brandon Allen fight, 17, 7. 19, 13, 15, 23. And the 23 came in a strike where he got triple digit strikes against Marc Andre Barriolt. So clearly the significant strikes start to come on towards the later half of the round. And the only thing skewing this number is the recent, the last Brandon Allen fight. I think Allen is going to be more cautious early in this fight and use his grappling way more. So I think that he's going to keep him under 24 and a half. And then the other one that had a little bit of interest to me, I did not play it yet. I am debating it because the number is very low for a first round significant strike number. The lowest I usually see is like 18 to 20. And that's in a fight that you think is not really going to be very exciting early. Damon Jackson's significant strike line set at 16 and a half. When I went into the numbers, it kind of made sense. He doesn't put out crazy output in the first round. Some fights he has 30, some fights he has seven, but still 16 and a half is very, very low. So I may make a play there. As of right now, I have not. All my plays are on Twitter. I mentioned them all in this video as well. If anything is added, you will see it there. So without further ado, let's go back in the history and look at my last couple events via my Twitter posts.